reporting in the New York Times citing a senior military official and evidence from the Airbus A320's voice recorder suggesting that one pilot had left the flight deck prior to the crash and was unable to get back into the cockpit. Take off thrust. The controller in Marseille notices something odd. German wings, Marseille. Confirm what cruising altitude you're cleared for. Flight 9525 is descending without permission. German wings, this is Marseille. Come in, please. The world watched in shock and disbelief. News channels broadcasted the tragic event, and social media was flooded with messages of sorrow and confusion. On March 24, 2015, German Wings Flight 9525 and Airbus A320 crashed into the French Alps. The flight had been routine, with no initial signs of trouble, as it soared over the picturesque snow-capped mountains. This routine flight, traveling from Barcelona to Dusseldorf transformed into a tragedy, claiming the lives of all 150 people on board. Passengers had boarded with the usual mix of anticipation and routine, unaware of the fate that awaited them. The crash site, a remote and unforgiving terrain, became a grim symbol of the disaster. Rescue teams faced immense challenges as they navigated the rugged mountainside, searching for any signs of life, though none were found. The guy outside is knocking lightly on the door and there's no answer. And then he hits the door stronger and no answer. There's never an answer. You can hear he's trying to smash the door down. If you look at what the New York Times is reporting in the first part of that story, it talks about how the two pilots had an ordinary, calm, cool, pleasant conversation. Then one pilot leaves uh, the cockpit and then uh, the, 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 the supposed lock, lockout happens. It could be nefarious, but I think the suggestion and more of us might agree uh, that it's the, the 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 pilot who remained inside the cockpit has some sort of medical emergency heart attack and but you're basing that solely on the fact that there was a calm conversation previously no i'm basing it on the fact that it's more likely mm -hmm. than to find a pilot that's wanting to commit mass suicide of more than 150 people the, the chances of that are extremely remote the chances of the first option so, a a, medical a emergency. More, yes a medical <laughs> emergency it doesn't raise the question though why there was only one person in the cockpit but if one pilot leaves, somebody else is supposed to go back in, a member of crew. So there's always two people there to prevent this from happening. The world grappled with the news, demanding answers to the seemingly inexplicable. Families of the victims were left in anguish, and aviation experts began to piece together the events leading up to the crash. The incident sparked a global conversation about airline safety and the mental health of pilots, as investigators uncovered troubling details about the co-pilot's state of mind. The tragedy of German Wings Flight 9525 remains a somber reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of vigilance in aviation safety. German Wings Flight 9525 departed Barcelona at 10.01 CET. The aircraft, an Airbus A320, was embarking on what was supposed to be a routine flight. The skies were clear and the weather conditions were favorable for a smooth journey. On board were 144 passengers and six crew members. Among them were families, business travelers, and vacationers, all with their own stories and destinations. 
The crew, experienced and professional, ensured that everything was in order for the flight. The flight plan, a straightforward journey to Dusseldorf. The route was well-traveled and the pilots were familiar with the path. Marseille, German Wings 9525. Left plane level 380. Air traffic control in Marseille tracks the plane as it crosses France. Four minutes later, the controller in Marseille notices something odd. German Wings Marseille, confirm what cruising altitude you're cleared for. It was a journey that had been made countless times before without incident. The first part of the flight proceeded normally. Passengers settled into their seats, some reading, others napping, while the flight attendants began their service. The aircraft cruised smoothly through the clear skies and everything seemed routine. Then at 1031 CET, the aircraft reached its cruising altitude of 38,000 feet. This is the point where the plane levels off and maintains a steady altitude for the majority of the flight. The pilots monitored the instruments, ensuring everything was functioning as expected. Minutes later, air traffic control cleared the flight to descend to 25,000 feet. This was a standard procedure, often done to manage air traffic and ensure safe distances between aircraft. The pilots acknowledged the instruction and began the descent. The time was 10.30 a.m. The black box from the flight would reveal that while Captain Sodenheimer was out, Lubitz briefly switched the plane's automatic pilot to 100 feet, the lowest setting, a test run for the return journey. Then he switched it back again before any air traffic controllers would take notice. Then Andreas began to set his destructive plans for the flight into motion. Andreas moved the cockpit door toggle switch, located on the pedestal to the left of his seat, from normal to locked position, disabling Sodenheimer's emergency access code and effectively locking him out. This seemingly ordinary instruction marked a turning point in the flight's trajectory. What followed was unexpected and alarming. The aircraft began a rapid descent, much faster than the usual controlled descent. Passengers and crew were likely unaware of the gravity of the situation at first, but the sudden change in altitude would soon become apparent. The descent continued, and air traffic control attempted to make contact, but there was no response. The flight that started as a routine journey was now in a critical situation, and the timeline of events would soon reveal the tragic outcome. At 10.40 CET, the Airbus A320 began its descent. However, this descent was far from ordinary. The aircraft descended at an alarming rate. Air traffic controllers attempted to contact the flight. Their calls met with an eerie silence. Unbeknownst to them, a chilling scenario was unfolding inside the cockpit. The captain, locked out, desperately tried to regain entry. His attempts were met with the cold, unyielding steel of the reinforced cockpit door. While the captain desperately fought to regain access, the cockpit remained shrouded in silence. The chilling truth, the co-pilot, Andreas Lubitz, was alone at the controls. Data recovered from the flight data recorder revealed the co-pilot's deliberate actions. He had engaged the autopilot and programmed a descent into the French Alps. His silence in the face of the captain's pleas and air traffic control's attempts at contact painted a disturbing picture. The investigation quickly turned its focus to Andreas Lubitz. Who was this man entrusted with the lives of 149 souls? What could have driven him to such a horrific act? Details about Lubitz's life and mental state became crucial pieces of the puzzle. Investigators scoured his background, searching for clues to explain his actions. The world waited with bated breath, eager to understand the man behind the tragedy. As investigators delved into Lubitz's past, a troubling pattern emerged. Medical records revealed a history of severe depression and anxiety. He had sought treatment from multiple doctors, concealing the extent of his condition from his employer. The investigation uncovered evidence of suicidal thoughts and a fascination with aviation disasters. The pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, painting a picture of a man struggling with inner demons. The cockpit voice recorder, recovered from the crash site, provided chilling insights. The recordings captured the captain's desperate pleas to re-enter the cockpit, met with the co-pilot's unwavering silence. The audio revealed the sounds of the captain trying to break down the door, a testament to his struggle. 
In the final moments, the passenger screams pierce the silence, a haunting reminder of the human cost of this tragedy. Despite the wealth of information gathered, many questions remain unanswered. What was going through Lubitz's mind in those final moments? Did he fully comprehend the consequences of his actions? Was this a premeditated act or a tragic consequence of his mental state? The investigation, while thorough, could not provide definitive answers to these haunting questions. The mystery surrounding Lubitz's motives continues to linger. The German Wings Flight 9525 tragedy sent shockwaves through the aviation industry. It exposed a critical vulnerability in cockpit security protocols. In the aftermath of the crash, airlines worldwide implemented new safety measures. The rule of two, requiring two authorized personnel in the cockpit at all times, became standard practice. This tragedy forced a paradigm shift in aviation security, prioritizing the safety and security of passengers and crew. The legacy of German Wings Flight 9525 extends far beyond the immediate tragedy. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of mental health awareness, particularly within high-stress professions. The crash sparked a global conversation about mental health in the aviation industry, prompting airlines to reevaluate their policies and support systems for pilots and crew. The tragedy also highlighted the need for greater societal understanding and destigmatization of mental health issues. In the wake of the tragedy, the world mourned the loss of 150 lives. The crash of German Wings Flight 9525 left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Passengers from 18 different countries, each representing a unique culture and background, each with their own stories, dreams, and aspirations, perished in the crash. These individuals were more than just passengers. They were beloved family members, friends, and colleagues. Families and friends grappled with their grief, trying to make sense of the sudden and tragic loss. The pain was palpable and the sorrow immense, forever marked by the tragedy. The names of the victims were etched into memorial plaques, ensuring that their memories would never fade. Memorials were erected at the crash site, standing as solemn reminders of the lives lost. These memorials became places of reflection and remembrance. And in the victims' home countries, where communities came together to honor their loved ones, Candlelight vigils were held and flags were flown at half-mast, serving as lasting tributes to their memory. These tributes were not just about mourning, but also about celebrating the lives that were lived. The world remembers German Wings Flight 9525, not just for the tragedy, but for the lives lost and the lessons learned. The aviation community came together, united in grief and determination, not just for the tragedy, but for the lives lost and the lessons learned. The remembrance ceremonies were poignant, filled with heartfelt speeches and moments of silence, but for the lives lost and the lessons learned. In the aftermath, significant strides were made in aviation safety, ensuring that such a tragedy would never happen again. Families reflected on the legacy of their loved ones, finding solace in the changes that were made in their honor. Did Andreas Lubitz do what he did? Why didn't he choose a lone suicide? Why did he choose to take the lives of many? What? in his broken, tortured psyche, made him feel a mass murder was the way to go. Why?